lightnings, five bat spells, dragon riders, and a no lava hound Lalo. I mean, you leave it to Klaus and you'll always deliver. Welcome to the round of 32 in the single elimination ROG French Clash Cup. We have the Queen Walkers taking on Les Eagles. Sorry, I can't say their name. Google Translate can say it for me, but I can't say it. Uh, Les E. Ziggs will be on defense here. Stars starts us off here with the Super Archer Clone Bomb into Kill Squad Lalo. We'll start in using the Warden to go all the way through and actually look at that. He, oh, that's, oh, that's really cool. I was, I was really worried when he's gonna land directly on top of a poison tower, but he gets it to throw with the blimp and then he's able to sail past it and then land in the safe zone behind it. Honestly, that is actually really clever. I never really thought about that, but yeah, that is 100% legit and the the balls on his bat to even try to land at the poison tower knowing that it'll throw and the confidence i guess is the bigger thing there but stars really off to a cool start here gets the monolith down can i get this uh scatter shot as well uh not quite gonna get the scatter shot down but he'll now start in with his queen queen is almost always the first one to start here when he starts to move in the heroes then the queen will take a little bit of damage and then get healed back up by the unicorn the king will come in with the frosty from the bottom corner. Gets an electro titan to help the queen to burn through these defense CC troops, CC troops a little bit easier. Got a couple super wall breakers. I'm not sure what he's going to use those for. Guess if the king ended up walking outside there, he could have redirected the king to stay back inside with a wall break. But he got a baby dragon as well. Is this just this uh, cookie cutter legend league army? It might be. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it is. But we know that he used this army for the bulk of the Legend League push in the last season. There we go. The Queen went to the outside. The Electric Titan's going back inside. But he gets a Wizard and a couple of Wall Breakers down to get him a little bit deeper in the base. There are a couple different options for entry there. But the World Champion joins in now. He'll get the Eagle Artillery down. And now notice how he starts to Lalo above the head of the heroes. Very, very important note here. Go above the head of the hero so you get the cross tanking so they all work together and instead of the heroes just coming to the end of their HP and then dying out. But with the extra damage they relieve off of the queen, the unicorn will have a chance to tire or get her killed back up there. The world champion gets some extra protection as well. She gets a headhunter to support her, but the defensive world champion did do a lot of damage there in the meantime. He has more balloons swarming to the other side of the base there. The world champion trying to make her way over to the scatter shot. He's got the scatter shot tied up for a moment there, so it wasn't really striking at balloons. And the world champion was able to handle well. The queen crosses through the middle. She can pop her ability, gets the defensive queen down. That's a lucky break there. I was worried about that scatter shot. I don't need to be. Start has got it if he's got the time he's got 30 seconds to clean it up queen survives and with that ability just clean house on the back side this looks absolutely crushed there so stars one of the best i mean we used to say he's like the best blizzard lalo attacker but you know after what he's done in the top of the legend league and with these wars and with some interesting extra little things they're like what he did with the poison tower he's definitely uh is yeah, he's good. He's good. I don't know what else to say. He's he's amazing. Mecha Dash will strike against Gaku for their open attack. And it looks like he's coming in also with the Super Archer Bomb, I think. But he's got a Dragon attack to pair with it. But we'll see what he can do. Very similar approach with what we saw in the last one. He'll go ahead and start the Dragons instead of just going with the Bomb first. But he'll send in the Blimp. The Blimp will land on top of the Poison Tower here. But maybe he can run the same trick that... Stars did and get it to throw on the approach and then land on it in the safe spot there. Honestly, if they're both going to be doing that, that's kind of cool. I, I mean, you got to hand it to them. That is a really cool idea. But it does look like Super Archers are inside. Maybe some Super Wizards as well. Yeah, he's got both in there. A mix. Uh, what do you call it? What does Bash call it? Uh, a Wombo combo when you mix both of them together. But he's going to go ahead and have the dragons go north. They all stay mostly together. One dragon rider splits off to the south. And he gets the heroes to go along the top side as well. And he's actually in a pretty good spot here. With all the dragons not splitting. It was a little bit of a, a gamble there. That the dragons would actually stay together with that initial approach. But it's working quite nicely. And now the heroes will have free reign over the back side of the base. They're basically running it exactly opposite of what we saw out of Star's attack there. Where... 
you just kind of have all the same overall phases, but just scrambled into a different order and make sure he gets more value out of the Warden because another one, the Warden was used to protect the Blimp on his way through. This one had the Dragons and the Warden protect him, but he's still got a lot of base on the backside here and she's not going to have enough punch to take it down. Gaku going for some revenge now with an Electro Titan Super Bowler Smash. Is this what he's using in Legend League? I know Klaus is using the zap into Lalo. Yeah, he's using a zap into Lalo. He just put, he's been posting a lot of his legendary attacks there. So definitely go check out all the Queen Walkers players over on their YouTube channels as well. But uh, Gaku's been streaming a lot on Twitch lately, streaming his Legend League. He was actually hosting into the stream here right as we went live into this war. And we'll see what he can do here with this Electro Titan Super Bowler Smash, but the Flame Flinger working up at the top of the base there while the Warden and the Queen continue to collapse in this left hand corner using the Warden Walk to take out the majority of the trash out there. And now the Queen will draw the Warden in. The Electro Titans, I assume, are going to take the lead here. Where are they? They, they haven't been deployed yet. What does he use? The, okay, now they deploy. They can actually burn through the defensive CC very, very quickly here. It's a Lava Hound and an Ice Golem, but the Lava Hound is kind of drawing him off course here. He, the Lava Hound was stuck on his king for a minute, and Electro Titan will go over there and clear the pups here, but the queen is not going to the core of the base, so the bowlers absolutely must secure the town hall takedown. They got the healers, luckily. They're getting some good bounces to the defenses on the other side of the base, but not going in there is also going to have the extra added complication of the monolith thing standing on the other side of the base. So the bowlers are going to start to get targeted by that. We did circle back in. Queen did circle back in. I didn't realize that she stopped following the king and she went back into the core of the base there. So he's got a chance here, but there's a lot of base on the backside. He's got a little bit more spell support there. He's going to have to pop the queen, but does it get him through the monolith? Is it also getting past the defensive king? It might, but the Diggy and the Rogue Champion are the first to engage right there. But he ranges them up and gets them through. Rogue Champion still has her ability. Baby Dragon comes in down the line there, tanking for the Rogue Champion and picking up that Archer Tower as well. How you doing, World Champion? She still has her ability. Find out some ground skellies right now. Frees up the defensive Grand Warden and the Tessas. Get the Queen through that. RC ability goes off. Tessa Farm gets wiped out. Yeah, and he's on the left side. Coming out of that Flame Flinger. And a Witch over there as well. Did the Witch come out of the Flame Flinger as well? I think it might have. What is that? Two Yetis and a Witch inside of the CC will work on the clean out there while everybody else will continue off to the right hand corner extra miscellaneous uh clean troops here all around and gaku pulls through i thought it was gonna fail it would have failed had the queen not turned back so op queen but i guess that's what you expect from the queen walkers poppy rem live for e let's see zigs coming in with electro dragons Laos on defense zap out the sweeper and poppy rem will start to make his approach here. Now with the E-Drags, we need to get the funnel set here. And he's gonna do that with very minimal losses, very minimal damage being dealt to him as a whole. Get some of the Teslas down as well. And now the E-Drags can start their way in. I wanna see a Rage here, and then I wanna see the early ward ability. There we go, perfect. He's got a blimp as well. He can use the blimp to secure the town hall, or he can use it somewhere in the back side of the base, maybe land on top of the monolith. But I bet you that monolith is guarded with a tornado trap. So we'll see what happens over there. Got the freezes to lock up the inferno. Here comes the blimp. He delayed it for a bit, but he's now sending it in. He can rage up and secure the town hall takedown. Overall, pretty solid approach here like this. Land on the town hall. Town Hall to activate there and quickly take it down. But the ball is picking away on the back side of the base there. Lots of ground expos over there as well. He's going to have his work cut out for him on the back side of the base. I'm a little bit worried about that. He's got the defensive king over there. Lots of threats here to ground troops. So as the e drags die out and the heroes make their way through, they have the additional added complication now of the, the, uh, the Lava Hound. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. Lava Hound is going to tie up his heroes and make it very difficult to get a lot of value out of the heroes here, but there's a lot of base left. Climb this one just short of 80%. Kazuma's live. We've got the lightning 
Oh, holy lightning! Kazuma coming in with 11 lightning. Almost every single spell invested into it to take out the monolith, the inferno, the poison towers. Holy, that base is gutted there. But now he's gonna have to do this Lalo and Dragon Rider mix with no spell support other than one poison and one freeze and what is this he's not even securing the town hall with his siege machine he's gonna have it come in at the left side of the base here and go to the eagle all right interesting setup but we'll see what he can do Bane will drop in for the top side he's got a wall break i guess to get the king in the defensive queen was heavily damaged up there by the lightning and the flame flinger has free raid over that area based there i'm not seeing any tesla's popping in that area so it's not running to any problems in that area but the queen is gonna get cut off by the king and get forced towards the town hall golem leading the charge over there cc will be drawn out here shortly by the golem as soon as he gets that expo down and the queen will have to deal with it here it comes uh triple ice golem and she okay she locks in the town hall he'll pop her ability so he can get the town hall down before he gets distracted off to the defensive cc able to get that done the king of the world champion able to finish off that left hand compartment got the throw and the defensive queen down that just needs to get through the defensive world champion on the side of the base here and he's at a single inferno and a a scatter shot so really not that big of a problem on the side of the base there we pop his rc ability and that'll damage up the defensive warden give him the punch to get the world champion through there diggy is there no lassie's there lassie's there because have you seen lassie <laughs> i'm over here talking about how i just want to see everybody using the <laughs> the diggy instead of the lassie when we had that last attacker from the other team go in but Kazuma's also breaking out the Lassie. And that's kind of interesting because I'm sure he has the Diggy maxed out by now. I'm kind of curious to wonder if he does. But he does get the, the Lalo to surge into the scatter shot. Directly targeted into that with the Hound controlling the air defense there. And so we can get in there. The Dragon Riders quickly sweep through. And this base is history. Nice job there from Kazuma. Make quick work of that. An interesting approach as well. The big, big zap investment in the middle base there does ultimately carry him through. He has a lava hound survive. He didn't really lose many of his troops here from the start of the attack. Like he he had all the dragon riders, I think, mostly survive. The hound survives, the blows survive. All he really lost was the heroes that were used early in the attack, and that's I guess why they call it a Sui hero. So easy day. As the Queen Walkers put a third one on the board. Okay, <laughs> so, all right, Kazuma has an excuse. He only has a level four Diggy. So he could have popped a hero potion or he could just run Lassie. So I guess if you don't have a max level pet, then Lassie might be better. Eric's live. I'm live? No, I'm not live. He's live. Wrong Eric. We got a double poison tower, anti two-star base, LP on defense, the newest addition to the Queen Walker's roster, taking Yuda's spot there. As Yuda will step into a, I assume at least like a partial retirement. I'm sure we'll see him play every once in a while, just like we see Stadra play every once in a while. They never really quit, you know, <laughs> but they may retire from the big tournaments and let the people who are going to put in the extra time or want to put in the extra time. But I mean, after winning the world championship, it was time for him to pass the reins back to a former world championship and uh, that LP have a chance to play with this Queen Walker squad and we'll see what he does on defense here because I'm concentrated on the defender we need to be concentrated on the attacker dragon surging in from the left side of the base here he's got the double clone and the double clone needs to spawn the balloons to get the monolith down I think is the biggest priority in the core of the base here so let's watch to see how he uses the clones looks like he spawns onto the monolith there but he loses it before oh rip oh rip that was that was a big 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 spell investment for every single balloon to spawn and then immediately drop to the town hall blast that is one of the biggest downsides of this attack here but he's still moving pretty decently is queen stay safe on the bottom she okay she's gone <laughs> disregard she's not very safe she's gone <laughs> well that's gonna be a problem all right let's e zigs as one more triple less than the queen walkers lp will strike now we can talk about lp now we can speak of our former 2019 world champion 
who's been all around throughout the Clash community on tons of different teams. One of my favorite Dutch players now playing with the Japanese Queen Walker squad. LP gonna make his way in with a Queen Charge and a Hogbunner Hybrid. It opens up with a blimp over the right side after the Queen starts in from the left side. Let's get that uh, Rage Tower to trigger a little bit early as he just sent in the Stinky Goblins into that area. So that's kind of interesting. But he is able to get the Eagle Artillery down and he's got a minion following up over that right side. Did not get a CC pull, but that's okay. Single Inferno up ahead or maybe it's okay. I, uh, I mean, it might be okay, but at least that Rage Tower fades before the Queen gets there. So smart idea to trigger the Rage Tower to minimize the damage onto the Queen. Able to catch in. Oh, lots of black bombs went off right there. Caught a couple of them with the Coco Loon, but one of them still took out a healer. Sprinkling more blues in the area. Just feels like he's walking into a trap after that initial set of black bombs. Does find another one right there. Yep, it is definitely trapped up like crazy. But he's moving through smooth still. Queen will move into the Town Hall Poison as she engages the defensive CC. But the Town Hall Poison is about to fade. But most importantly, she stays outside of the range of the single Inferno. Now, he'd like to... Where, where do you put in the the next phase here? It looks like he's going to set it in for the top side and get that Inferno out of the way. But he's already forming out the funnel to get the king to collapse in a little bit further. He drove him to the outside and then through the corner. And then with an ice golem supported as well, he will thin it out there and make the pathing for the miners that much middle. Like, create a very, very narrow lane. And they're very good at doing exactly that. But there's the ward ability. The scatter shot down. The king ended up breaking the wall, and he's on the inside of the base there. Does he have the yak? No, he's got the frosty. So I feel like if the king has to go through multiple walls, then the yak will outperform the frosty there. But frosty is good because no matter where the king stands, even if he's out attacking trash, the frosty continues to throw these little frost mites and continue to pick up work there. He's got the poison lizard onto his warden there, which poison lizard on the warden is great for these hybrid attacks here. I don't know if he has a chance to pull through, but he got the defensive queen out of the way there. He got the header to get to the, the support for his world champion. Diggy's still working. Pop his RC ability. Queen is going through a wall. What is this wall choice, queen? Where do you think you're going? At least you'll take the scatter shot. He's got random hogs being tossed into the bottom. I didn't realize he held on to some hogs until the end of the attack, but the queen will handle the scatter shot. The hogs down south working onto that wizard tower. The wizards will go and hit, hit that for one last strike there. The king moved into the last position and look at this. Holy cow, the queen walkers are going for the perfect war. Glass will close. LP picks up a fourth one. Yeah, I guess I, I thought it was a hybrid. But yeah, he's got 21 hogs is what it was there. And no heal spells. That's kind of interesting. But anyways, let's move on. Let's get into the fourth attack out of Less E Ziggs. And we'll see if they can pick one up here. As they try to stick with the dragons. Oh, dragons, dragons, dragons. He will go ahead and send in a bunch of balloons and his warden from the top of the base. And I guess go for the big super archer bomb value. Here comes the blimp. He can not only protect the blimp, but he can also protect these balloons. But he waited a really long time. He should have sent his blimp a little bit earlier. And so he can pop the warden earlier and save these balloons. But the balloons circle backwards. And they're going to end up picking up these archer towers. So... I mean, it's fine if the if the warden goes into the invisibility. That is just icing on the cake there, so we can continue his damage output working with these super archers. So good value right here, but he does have the double poison towers going off in the area, and the super archers are taking a bit of damage. And if they don't get the town hall down, he's in a very very difficult spot here. But he's got super wizards and super archers. He's continued to make them invisible. They're into the last one now. Warden's trying to help assist, and the town hall stays standing. So you got to be really careful. Careful landing next to the poison towers because they can kill your troops there. And now the defenses of the Queen Walkers are just as strong as their offenses. And we'll see if he can somehow pull this back now. Now the sweeper did go down on the left side, so he's gonna come into the back side of the sweeper here and they'll give him a chance. But his queen and king and electric titan will fight out the defensive CC and he can push in and get that air defense down. Great the lane here for the dragons to surge into the core. Other than the town hall, they don't really have a lot of threats in there, so like they should be able to handle it. 
And he got the tunnel activation, so the Dragon Runners can help assist getting it down. Even though it's not at 50%, you have the King of Pops ability on the left side of the base. Their Queen is not going to pick up that air defense, so he's going to take a bit of extra damage. And he throws the Royal Champion in the core of the base there as well. I don't even know if he's got the two stars secured yet. But he needs to get to the Town Hall with no Warden support. There's no spell support here. And there's the defensive queen setting at the Town Hall. He's, he's in a lot of trouble here. He's dropping fast. And the Town Hall is not going down. It is a one star. As Kazuma holds off this French clan another attack. And they are absolutely getting crushed by the Queen Walkers. No contest on this one. A total shutout. And now... We need to see what happens with Klaus. We'll see if they can get that perfect war. Coming in to close out the war. Klaus will close. Six lightnings, five bat spells, dragon riders, and a no lava hound Lalo. I mean, you leave it to Klaus and he'll always deliver. Let's see what he's got. They'll go in with some lightning to take out the scatter shot and the poison tower next to the town hall. They'll then go in with the king over to the left side of the base. There go balloons come down and a wall break to drive the king to go fight the defensive royal champion. Queen comes in down the line. I assume she's going to break off to the right here and go get this inferno down, which leaves the town hall. But he's got a blimp. He can secure the town hall with the blimp. There goes the wall breaker for the queen. Arrives successfully. The queen will go in and get the multi inferno down. And now he needs to get all the splash damage dealt with on the base here as he goes with the Dragon Runners and the small uh, set of balloons here. So the Queen will handle this Inferno, will handle the Wizard Tower. So that area of the base is taken care of. The King and the Royal Champion. The King actually working with the Phoenix there. Royal Champion with the Diggy are able to go in and get past the the eagle artillery and all the way into the expo there but the expo is not the target the inferno is he starts to drag right into the top of the base there warden working with them here comes the blimp he's got the the small amount of blues there uh, that are working with the dragon runners, but most of them off to the left side there But he's gonna have the blues give some protection a little bit of shield in front of the dragon runners that are going to the monolith So that's helpful doesn't have any spells to get through the monolith, but he needs to get this wizard tower and scatter shot down. The town hall takedown is looking like it's going to happen as he does have this thing. Goblins come out. He gets the monolith secure. Dragon Riders are on to the scatter shot. Take the scatter shot. Pick up the wizard tower. And then here come the bats in from the bottom corner. They're going to build into a massive swarm here before they engage any of the defenses that can mow them down quickly. But he needs to get the wizard tower. And he, oh, he throws a skeleton spell. He doesn't have a freeze. He uses a skeleton spell to tank the wizard tower and the other defense in the area. The bats try to get through, but the bats get targeted. Ice Golem's still moving. Come on, Klaus. You're so close. Close it. No! He needed a freeze. He needed a freeze. As fun as it is to try to tank a wizard tower with a skeleton spell, you gotta have the freeze to lock it down, or you need to have something come in and tank that wizard tower on the backside. And he had an ice golem. I assume that he maybe could have thrown an ice golem down to tank this wizard tower in the back edge, but it is gonna be the miss of the war. It was definitely a fun one. The Queen Walkers fall just a couple buildings short of the perfect war, but they will move on to the round of 16 here in the French Clash Cup.